Bunny, and today is going to be a first impression comparison video. It's not a first impression Friday because I so missed Friday and I don't even know what day it is. So we're just gonna do it today. I feel like talking about this today. Uh, so today we're going to be doing like a versus comparison first look at three brand new contour palettes that have all come out just in the beginning of this year. So they're all pretty new. One of them was just recently in my favorites video for January and February, and this is the one that I've had the longest, which is Kat Von D's Shade and Light palette. So you get three highlighted shades and three contouring shades in this one. The next one that we're gonna look at is Too Faced's brand new Cocoa Powder contouring palette, and this one has four shades and once again is a powder contour and highlight. In this one you get a little brush and two highlighty shades, two contouring shades, and then the last one that I actually have on my face today, which is brand 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 new and may still be sold out. I had to order mine on Macy's. This is the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Contour Kit, and this one is in the lightest shade. This one has three highlighting and three darker contouring shades as well. So I'm just going to tell you guys right off the bat, I feel like these two powder ones are better if you don't have a lot of practice or if you're a beginner at highlighting and contouring, whereas the Anastasia Cream Kit is definitely for like if you've had a lot of practice like i feel like maybe i'm not even that practiced enough to use it properly yet myself i just got it in the mail yesterday so today was my very first time using it trying to apply it and i think i did okay i feel like maybe my contouring and highlighting looks a little bit more exaggerated and pronounced and darker than it normally does and i almost feel like maybe it makes my face look a complete different color than my neck which is not a totally uncommon situation for me to be in it's definitely a daily struggle always for me to find a foundation that really goes well. I would argue till the dawn of the new millennium whether I am a yellow based or a pink based and lots of different people have lots of different opinions on what I am. Not human. Sippy sippy. So I'm gonna just continue to broadly discuss all three interchangeably and I hope that that's not gonna drive anybody crazy. So price comparison wise, surprisingly, and I didn't remember this to be the case, but the Kat Von D is the most expensive and you can get this one at Sephora and it's 46 bucks. The second highest priced one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. I believe I paid $43 for this one and the least expensive one is the two faced Coco contour and this one is $40 and I think that this is still just a Too Faced online exclusive as well. I was just in Ulta and Sephora yesterday both and I did not see this at all there yet. I'm not sure if they're gonna get it or not. These two palettes, Kat Von D, Anastasia, do not come with a brush. There is a correlating brush that is like associated with this Kat Von D shade and light palette, but I believe the brush separately is like 30 something dollars. So now a little bit of one at a time. Um, in the Too Faced Cocoa Contour Kit, one of the things that I absolutely love about it is just like their chocolate bar palettes, this is made with legit chocolate cocoa powder. So it smells amazing and something about the magic of chocolate being in makeup, I feel like it wears on my face just like a lot nicer than some other powders do. I always said that about the chocolate bar palette. I don't have the semi-sweet but I do have the original chocolate bar palette and it is still one of my favorite palettes because I feel like it just wears so nicely. I don't know, whatever they've done with this cocoa powder formula, 
It's amazing. You get a highlighting shade in here called Light Cocoa. That's a matte highlighting shade. You also get Medium Cocoa, which is like, I use this as a transition since it's not the darkest contouring shade in the palette. I kind of use this one to blend out the darkest contouring shade, which is Dark Cocoa. And all three of those shades I just discussed are matte. The only shimmery one, and it is pretty shimmery, but I like that about bronzers and highlighters personally, is Pop of Light, and I use this definitely just kind of in my under eye area, just to kind of like give myself a little bit more of a dewy glow. And I actually have a little bit of some of these powders on today. I definitely have Pop of Light on right here, so if you see like a nice shiny kind of effect, that's what's doing it. I definitely feel like this is probably the easiest to use if you are a beginner at highlighting and contouring. There are not different shades of this palette, like a light, medium, deep. You don't get that. It's just this one here. The next one that I have grown quite fond of is the Kat Von D Shade and Light. I put this in my favorites. I, first of all, adore the packaging on it. I always love how Kat Von D's products look. I also love how she named these products. It's so clever. Since it's called Shade and Light, the three shade or contouring colors all start with the letter S, so they are somber, shadow play, and subconscious, and all of the light highlighting colors start with the letter L, so they are lucid, lyric, and uh, levitation. All of the highlighting and contouring powders in this kit are matte, so if you love matte and not any sparkle, then this is probably the correct choice for you. This one is also not available in different skin types, though. So this is what you see is what you get. There's only this one kit. I'm loving this one. I've been loving this one. That's why it was in my favorites. It's definitely been a staple for me to use for the past two months. I'm just so obsessed with highlighting and contouring. Pretty much any time there is a new highlighting and contouring kit on the market, I cannot resist it. I want to try it. I'm convinced with every new one that comes out, it's always gonna like make my face look like a different face, which is kind of the nature of uh, this last one. I feel like I almost like kind of don't look like myself today. Whose face is on my face? I don't know. This one is a ton of fun to play around with, but definitely, like I was saying, I feel like you kinda need to know what you're doing. I don't know if I'm just like not advanced enough or if I just haven't played around with it enough and I'm kind of thinking that that's what it is. I basically spent an hour on my makeup today and like the first hour, of my makeup. I, I spent multiple hours, but the first hour of me applying my makeup today was just getting up to the contouring and foundation step and it was madness. It was fun though. I will say for the packaging, when I saw it on Instagram, I just knew I was gonna have to have it because every time it just looks like such magic. But I was kind of scared that it was gonna be like a Z palette, the front. I kind of thought it would maybe just be like a flimsy kind of looking piece of plastic, but it's not. It is like an actual, you can hear it. It's like thick, you know? I feel like things are not just gonna get squished and damaged in here if I just so happen to travel with this. But it definitely takes some getting used to. I have had this makeup on for about eight, nine hours so far today. I did feel like my face got a little bit more dewier than it normally would with my normal routine kind of adding this. I have touched up with powder a couple times today but that's it. I feel just kind of like where I contoured my chin area. I feel like maybe I got a little carried away and I feel like maybe my cheekbones, I don't know, maybe just, what do you guys think? I don't know. I ended up using the darkest shade to do my contouring with. I was originally going to use this middle shade. So I ended up using this darkest shade, which is cinnamon to do my contouring with. And I feel like that's pretty dark from what I normally do. I wanted to use this middle color, which is called Nude, but I did not use it because kind of the more that I put it on, it looks like kind of almost orangey and I didn't want to just slap a bunch of orange stuff on my face. 
I definitely love the highlighting shades in here. I feel like they really do add a lot of nice highlight to your face. And I actually saw this tip from someone else on YouTube. I think his name is Manny MUA. I could be wrong. Um, but he was advising to put a tiny little drop of Tarte's Maracuja oil on these before you really start working with them to make them a little bit creamier. I'm not sure if, you know, it arrived to me in the mail and it's been really, really cold outside lately. So I don't know if that's why when I got them, they were like a little bit chalkier, I guess you could say, but just like one little drop of maracuja oil. I mean, I feel like you could use them even if you didn't have the maracuja oil, but I think it definitely helps, especially with these highlighting shades to make them a little bit creamier. I have seen a lot of people on Instagram use just this and I don't see them add any foundation to it. So I think if you really know what you're doing, you can somehow like just do your whole face out of this not including any foundation. I wanted to add some foundation to what I had done because I felt like it was just so drastic. So I definitely feel like you can get some much more professional, dramatic results by using this product, but it also may be like a little bit too much for everyday wear just using this by itself, not adding any foundation. If any of this makes any sense. I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm rambling. There's kind of like not one that I dislike out of any of these. It's just kind of like what you're looking for. If you're looking for more of an everyday look, once again, I'd kind of go with these two. If you're really professional or you like for your makeup to look really polished and dramatic, you might enjoy playing around with this one better. I am definitely looking forward to getting a little bit more familiar with this one, kind of exploring with my skills. I feel like this one requires a lot of tools. I had to use like, three or four different brushes and a couple beauty blenders. And I feel like these two, I can just kind of like, if I'm in a rush trying to get out the door, I can just be like, bam, 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 good to go. Oh, and the last thing is, is that this one comes in three different shades. So this is the lightest shade and I'm tempted to get their huge contouring book next. If you've seen from Anastasia, it like opens, it's huge. It's got like a million different contouring powders in it. I'm trying to just say no, but it keeps beckoning me. I'm looking at it online like at least once a day. That's it for today. I hope you guys found this at least a little bit helpful. Also, in case anybody wants to know, I finally got to order one of the Anastasia matte, like liquid to matte lip sticks. So I'm wearing Pure Hollywood today, just in case anybody wanted to know. Thank you guys so, so much for hanging out today and for watching. If you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Swamp Family and give an alligator its wings. Also, if you want, you can like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Graveyard Girl, or you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, or Instagram at Graveyard Girl, same way it's spelled here. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye!